This conference will now be recorded. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. It's April 12, 2022, from Smith County Courthouse for Supervisor Board meeting. We have an agenda in front of us. We need a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Everybody so moved. Please make a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Todd has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Move on. We got to approve the minutes of the April 5th meeting and claims. Everybody had a chance to look that over if there's any corrections. Through the minutes for the April 5th meeting and claims. Mark has made a motion to approve the minutes of the April 5th meeting and claims. Second. Jim has seconded. Any further discussion on this? Roll call. Todd? Aye. Mark? Aye. Mike? Aye. Steve? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay, moving on. Item number three County Attorney General discussion. So, Aaron, you have anything for us? Something? Mm -hmm. You have some information for us today. Well, uh, I don't have anything particularly pressing. I think I emailed you last week. There was an outstanding Kephart citation uh, that, you know, had been hanging out there for a while. The judge ruled on that. Uh, you know, guilty, of course, is $100 fines. I don't imagine there's going to be an immediate effort to, for him to say, oh, gosh, I better clean this up. Anyway. Um, um, there's that. I um, guess I don't necessarily have anything other. I, you know, Rachel and the sheriff. I'm working with different, you know, answering, working with them on a couple of different things. I probably, uh, you know, if they want to fill you in, they can. Because I, you know, I don't know if I'm how interested you are and everything that's going on every day. But if you, if you have questions, you ask. But um, uh, but um, I do want to say uh, next week I'm going to be gone. Uh, Becky and I are leaving, I think, early Friday morning. We got two kids out in California, so we're going out to see them. We're not going to. I don't remember when we come back. I'm not in charge of anything. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I think it's a week or a little less, I think. Right. So, I mean, but anyway, um, it's not like we've gone that long of time. But so next week, I won't be here. Uh, I might try and hook in, uh, you know, remotely if. If I'm somewhere, I can do that. I mean, we're, I mean, California's not off the face of the earth, but I mean, I don't know what we're doing. I mean, yeah. Becky might have us out on a hike somewhere. I, I don't know. But anyway, just let you know that. Um, I guess I don't know that I have anything else, unless you guys have questions for me. Any questions? No. Well, have a good vacation. Yeah, have a good vacation. Thank All right. You. Thank you, gentlemen. Good. We have the. Sheriff's update. Very briefly, um, a little bit of change in how we order vehicles uh, for the sheriff's office. We got to speak for them much earlier for 23 than what we used to. So we didn't uh, get on the list for a pickup for 23. Typically, we don't have to do that till December for a July 23rd um, pickup. But that's changed. So I did speak for one of those. Um, I think part of the problem with Kephart is he keeps getting $100 fines, right? Part of the problem with everybody else, they keep getting $100 fines and they keep doing the same stuff over and over again. I'm not charging, handing down those sentences, but maybe that needs to change a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you mean like an increase in the fee, the fee? of the fine? Um, that'd be a place to start. The $100 isn't going to get it done. No, no, that's a tank of gas. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Judge, we have so frustrating on our end. We see it a lot, not just in that part. Part of the problem. Um, the other thing that concerns me is you know, you see the inflation numbers eight and a half percent today. Um, my budget didn't increase eight and a half percent for next year, so we'll see how that plays out. Come next 
somewhere in for gas. Area. We're talking about gas. Gas, just overall food, you know, everything. Yeah. Everything, yeah. So we'll just kind of watch that and see how it plays out. That's not unique to my office. Everybody's part of it. Probably see the effects of that if it continues. It's like uh, normally you have a little surplus at the end anyway, don't you? A little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. I just took it. Mike's, yeah. yeah. Other than that, I guess I don't have anything more. Got some investigations that are still ongoing. So. Other than that, people here have questions for me. If you guys do, you have to answer. On that, don't we have something going on that Kepart case or whatever we want to call it, that abandonment or something? And isn't there, was that like 17 months or something we had to wait or? I, I don't remember the details on that. I, I think that was started before we yeah. took that. Put Aaron on the spot. That's county kind of attorney uh, issue. So I don't want to go on. Yeah. Do you remember? Anything well, um, on that? wasn't I mean, it more like two and a half years? Or you something? know, I'm not because a lot of that was, uh, you know, before I was. Kind of, so I, I, I'm familiar with a little bit, and I don't want to. I don't. You know, to be honest with you, the time frames we've had to wait, you know, in the past, I'm just I'm not really sure because Mark was always in charge of that, you know, so I really don't want to say one way or the other. Um, you know, sometimes it does seem like you're waiting for a decision for a long time. You always get into that. I've got I've got private clients where I have to have this discussion with two sometimes you're you're waiting on a decision from a judge, and it seems like you wait a long, 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 long time. And uh, people will say, Well, should somebody say something to the judge? I'm like, No, I'm not going to mention names, but there was about 10 uh, back in 2000 and probably 2007 where I, where I did precisely that. So we wait, not, not, it wasn't the same judge, line. it was completely different. Kate, you know, none of nobody, the judge was not even a judge. Wasn't even in this county, but anyway, uh, waited a long time. I did finally say something. Didn't work out well. I learned my lesson that uh, I'm never going to bring that up to a judge again, so I never had. So we always end up waiting, you know. So I, you know, I don't know how long we had to wait for different things because I, you know, Mark waited. You, Todd, you referenced the uh, abandoned property. Now that's a different case. That case still pending. Right, there's an abandoned property case pending that's set for later in the summer where we're trying to get title to some of what property that's in Kev Park's name, but that's from our position is abandoned, which is this property. Um, isn't, isn't that because of the property taxes and not being paid and stuff and the judgment against it? Is that what you're referring to? I, I, I the cleanup from the last time? I don't remember we talked about. Quite a while ago, and yeah. you know, about something I'd already started. Um, since well, was it nineteen? I think you guys cleaned them up yeah. that time, and then it just fell back in. And then I thought there was something that the county start rather than paying another twenty thousand dollars to clean him up, there was some sort of a I don't know if it was abandonment or what. Like, I think you might be talking about the petition for abandoned property. Uh, that was filed. Well, I, I don't remember exactly how then it was filed. So it was filed with Mark Still County Attorney. <laughs> filed. I, I don't remember exactly. I mean, I've got the file. I looked at it. I just don't remember when that petition was filed. But but it's set for trial. Uh, I think this August. Now, what you could be, and I don't know if this is uh, what you think, but it could be, I'm speculating, any kind of district court case, whatever uh, you file it, it's like personal injury case or anything else. If I file a case, well, like I said, let's say I'm getting ready to file a case today, you know, for personal injury, business litigation, or whatever, um, it, it's, you will frequently wait anywhere from 12 months to 18 months just to get a trial 
right? So if I file a case today, I'm probably going to be looking at a year down the road at least before I ever get a trial date. Um, I don't know exactly why it works that way either. Um, I always thought that's a little long, but you know, I'm not in charge of that either. But uh, so I don't know if maybe uh, at some point Mark might have said, okay, we're going to file this, but we're going to have to wait this long before we get the trial. I, I don't know if that's maybe what he said, um, but it could be. I mean, whenever you file a case, you probably are waiting a year to a year and a half before you ever get the trial. A lot of times people will say, why is that? I'll say, I I'm thinking about that 25 years and I still don't really know why I take, you know why I mean I guess I do court administrators and the state court administrator have their rules and like that. anyway it, it seems like it does take a long time to get it takes weight to get stuff through the system and I'm going off on a rant here I realize that to get stuff through the system I don't know Crazy, but, you, know, you just sound like the constituents that speak to me about how come it takes so long. That's and, what they sound like. I uh, wish I had a, you know, I wish I wish I had a really good answer. It's other than well, people that control the system have it set up this way, and I don't know. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to make people mad that uh, have power over me. <laughs> but and that's fine. We, well, you know. Well, Get her figured out. Yeah. I don't have any more unless you guys do something. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Aaron. Right. Moving on to item number five, department head discussion. Are there any department heads that need to discuss anything? I got a couple things I wanted to mention. Okay. Um <clears throat> So uh, one has to do with county abatement. The, all the cities in the, the county, be Riceville, Stacyville, St. Ansgar, and Osage have county abatement for new construction to residential and commercial properties. And it's something that I guess I'd like to try to have happen for the entire county. Uh, NIACOG is the uh, entity that writes up a plan for all those cities. And, so if this was something the board decided they wanted to do, Niacog would have to write up a plan. I'm going to probably have, and Chris Diggins is the guy that does that from Niacog. So I'm going to have him come to a board meeting sometime. He can explain the whole thing to us, uh, educate the board as far as ins and outs to it, and um, then we can decide if we have something we want to do or not. So that's something in the future. Um, the HVAC, uh, Pre-construction meeting is going to be taking place. I'm going to be there. Mike said that you'd like to attend. So if we're going to have a third member or not, then we're going to have to do it as a meeting. So that's just a heads up. When's it going to be? The uh, April 20th. So if if there's a third person, then we'll have to do a meeting. Which another week to think about it then? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have a time for that? 9:30. In here. I have a couple of meetings that day, so I'd probably be going to Charles City, so I might just drop out of that one. Okay. So just a heads up. Yeah. So if something if everybody wants to come or whatever. So um Amy said she had uh so we, uh the bill in the legislature was which was uh Senate file 2366 had to do with wind turbines. We talked about that just or it came up last week a little bit how it might be a detriment to our TIF funding. That bill is is not a detriment to our TIF funding. It actually is a good thing for us. Uh, the key thing is if we have a wind ordinance in effect, which we do, uh, it doesn't affect us at all. And Amy, our assessor, said it's actually stuff the assessors across the state of Iowa lobby to try to make it happen because of, uh, of the benefits to it. What it had to do is if a if a turbine gets repowered it, and you did not have a wind ordinance in effect, the uh, taxes you could collect actually would start at zero again rather than what than uh, what they're currently would be collecting. So this changes that. So it's a good thing for everybody. No effect to us. 
And uh, the last thing is, you know, if that owl works for our meetings, I guess I'd like to propose, and we don't have to decide today in that, but possibly purchasing one for our for our meetings. Yeah. A lot of the meetings I go to, I know they use them, so they're pretty popular and work good. That's all I have. Okay. Well, thank you. Information, mostly. Yep. Well, good information. Okay. I guess we're down to item six, county engineer. Okay. Morning, Rich. Morning. A um, couple updates. The <clears throat> Balsam Bridge, they're forming the guardrail or the railing today or this week. I don't know if they'll get done this week forming it with the weather that's coming in, but I think we're going to start planning maybe a like plan next week for the railing. That sounds to me like the subcontractor who's doing the approaches is chomping up a bit to get out there. So hopefully things are accelerating pretty well out there. But uh, with the weather, who knows what's happening? Um, also, I have a meeting at 1030 out at the ethanol plant on the state line. Um, the, road, the ethanol group, they want to put a different driveway in, but there's concerns with the road that's out there and obviously with heavy traffic on there, there's been a concern for a while. There's some panels that are broke. And then on the north lane, which is the westbound lane, with all the heavy traffic, those panels have bolted. And so they're all tipped. And when you truck drive over, you can see them rocking. And that's the loaded side. The other side seems to be fairly okay. So uh, that road isn't in any five year plan to, to do anything with, but uh, it's not getting any better. Uh, I'm going to ask, I'm going to meet with their subcontractor or their prime contractor that's doing their driveway and just get a quote for what it would cost to replace the lane of traffic from 218 to the facility or at least from the railroad tracks to their facility because those are the worst panels that are there. Or I'm going to get an estimate too and figure out what a Dalbar retrofit and diamond grind would do for that. Uh, the Dalbar retrofit is where they drill in, they grind in bell bars and they Epoxy in and the diamond grind to get rid of the salting. And each joint now there's a load transfer. I don't remember, Jim, do you know if that's at least an eight inch pavement? Eight there? inch. Okay. So it's possible to do it on an eight inch pavement. Anything else we had was less than eight inches. You can't do a dull bar or retrofit where you haven't been able to in the past. So there's options there, but we have to figure out what we want to do there because those panels are falling. There's actually one panel that's completely busted out and it's holding water. So it's just getting worse. So something that I'm going to look at too. Um, in addition to that, we were going to discuss the budget and program here this morning, but we won't because the county engineer's website went down last week and they haven't gotten it back together in about me and about 60% of the other county engineers can't access our, well, none of the county engineers can access our information, but everybody was waiting to do their final tune-ups this week before their board meetings and last week too, and it went down. So we will be in violation with the code of Iowa, but however, uh, the situation is not really in our control. So we'll, they'll make adjustments to that. So we won't have to worry about that. We'll just have a note on it because there's Iowa code and then there's what we do here. And according to Iowa code, it has to be turned on the 15th, but because of technology issues, there's really nothing we can do about that. I think we could turn it in a month prior to, but we're still always trying to fine tune everything before the end. So uh, we won't be talking about budget and program this week. And I don't know if we'll be talking about it next week unless the, the system gets brought that up further soon because it's it's there, it's doing some final touches on it and getting some maps ready to go, but don't have anything for you today. So, well, that's the approved the DOT, but yeah, that one won't be discussed. Okay. Today. okay. So, then the only other thing I have for you this morning is well, two things the, the, the bridge design on 105, and then I handed out earlier kind of a cost breakdown. Jim was worried or wondering, you know, what does it cost us to do everything? Um, so on the very top of that sheet, you'll see that this was a quote from a while ago, six month temporary traffic control with signals on that location for one lane of traffic. Um, after doing some research, I don't think, I think I brought it to you guys last week that there really isn't a, a traffic control standard that fits the needs that we have in that situation because of no passing zones that exist already. Otherwise, it'd be a little different situation. So um, they gave us a quote of $55,500 for six months and then Beyond six months, we're talking about $6,500 a month for traffic control. I don't know how long everything's going to last, so I just assumed a year on something. So these temporary pair numbers are the same as what I, I don't remember if I handed out to you this, but this is what you've got, what I've been telling you about. 
the italic uh, engineering is stuff that I asked WHKS about is rough numbers of what it would cost to engineer a temporary repair, what it would cost to engineer a long-term repair, and then a bridge replacement uh, with preliminary and, and final design. Um, <clears throat> so those are the numbers there. And off to the right then is option one is bridge replacement with, and I averaged it out, you know, they said between 60 and, and 80 years. I just picked 75. I should have picked 70, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. 75-year um, life cycle um, traffic control setup um, for temporary until from from when we decide something and when we can get a contractor to, to do a project. I figured roughly a year, so $94,500 for traffic control until we close the bridge and replace it. Um, so you got temporary traffic control and then using the averages from over the other side plus the engineering, we're looking at a cost of $860,000 to $1.06 million. And those are just estimates. We don't know for sure what things are going to cost. And then the cost per year, low range and high range is between $11,000, $11,400 to $14,220 per year for 75 years. That's the cost of the bridge life cycle. So similar down there, temporary repair with replacement of the bridge. Um, I don't know. I use six months for the traffic control because I don't know if we can get a design for temporary repair. Um, in six months and get a contractor to do it to open it back up and then do a, a replacement of the bridge. But obviously that adds more cost because we're doing an extra construction step in there. So we're looking at, you know, a, a lower traffic control setup, but, you know, increased temporary repair costs, and then a, a full bridge replacement. Um, you're looking at uh, cost per year for 75 years because it's a 75 year fix as well. $12,209 to $16,620. Per 70 per year for 75 years. These are just straight numbers. There's no inflation or anything else kept in there. They're today's dollars spent stretched out over 75 years. And then obviously the long-term repair. Um, we'll have to design that one similar. You know, if it's a long-term repair, it's still going to take design work to do and go through DOT letting. So I figured a year's worth of temporary traffic control, then the long-term repair is, is is cheaper, but it's only a 20-year fix. Um, so we're looking at cost per year of $5,953 to $8,513, but only for 20 years. That only gets us, you know, not even a third of the way uh, to the regular bridge cost. So it's actually more expensive because we'd have to do something in 20 years. So that's the breakdown of the costs, which I recommend we just do the complete bridge replacement and, and not kick the can down the road. Um, and I don't know if the temporary repairs is something that we can get done, even if we get a design, when we can get, can we get the contractor to do it and how much will it actually cost if we're, you know, trying to be in a hurry with a temporary repair. Jim and I looked at that bridge and the title of the limestone wall on the <clears throat> south lane east side is in the river. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was when we yeah. it. That's bad. Yeah, it's bad. That's what prompted the whole guy. Yeah, before it was only a few bricks down or a few blocks down blocks. by the water line, we were gonna There's, do a repair on that, and that yeah, didn't happen. It's three feet deep by yep. the length of the, the whole. Well, it's a substantial project. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. I would, if you, like the long term repair of the 20 year one. I guess the cost per year is cheaper, but it only lasts 20 years. Yeah, and then you got to start thinking, okay, what's it going to, what's the cost of the bridge going to be in 20 years? Add that on top to get the same life cycle. Yeah, it's going to be more expensive. Is there, is there money in your bridge repair fund to do the total replacement? I think I can get that stretch. Just that stretch. It you know, depends on how the bridge comes in north of Stacyville, because that's how close we are to borrowing ahead on everything right now. The numbers we look at, it looks like we can do it. Because it's actually in a different fiscal year, so we'll have money coming in before it's left. But it's hard to project all that stuff when money's coming in and out, and what at what times that money comes in and out. We program for when the project is let, and here's the money we have. But if a project comes in under budget, well, they don't release that money either until the project's done, and then it shows up in our in our, in our fund balance. So it's touch and go. But I think too, if we were to borrow ahead a little bit, if we were if we were over the four and a half years by a small amount, I think I could write a letter to the DOT or contact them and say, look, this is yeah. this. And they would probably, they might be okay with it. I don't know that for sure, but depending on how much over we would be, they might allow that. Yeah. Never had it happen, so I don't know. Yeah. 
Uh, just by forecasting the money where it's at. Now, and we don't know yet either what the federal bill is doing to our funding because it's supposed to increase it, but they haven't given us those numbers yet, so we don't know, which is why I think we're probably in better shape. It's just that we're in a longer timeline now for it. When I submitted a review for Worth County's budget, I had some projects in there and it said you can't do that because I had borrowed nine years ahead for bridge money because I was trying to show a need for the money, but it wouldn't let me do it. So I had to turn them to local projects, even though we might not have the money to do them. I needed to show a need. Yeah. And I know the DOT doesn't like that, but how else do you, if we just show what we have to make our budget work, how does the DOT ever know or anybody know that we need more than we get? So um, the way I pencil things out now, I think it's really thinking it'll work. Uh, it'll be close. And then, you know, is that, there's that federal infrastructure money that's supposed to be coming at some point too, and maybe by then that'll, and that increase, might increase that I funding, or it's supposed to increase that funding, we just don't know how much. Yeah. Yeah. But we can't leave that bridge set there forever no, like that. I can see it. So. One side, anyways. Mm -hmm. The other side's probably not going to get any better. I mean, you can see that's deteriorated too. Well, it's the other it's, line's it's off on. It's weird how they built it because on the west side, it's half the abutment is limestone, the other half is concrete, and on this side, it's in the middle. So I don't know if they aligned the road a little bit to make that intersection work better when they did the bridge or what, or when they widened it, they probably had to shift things. Because that's what the project was, was a widening project. I don't know how they did it or why they did it. They did, but it's there and we got to deal with it. So yeah. and that yay was, for jurisdictional transfer back in the 80s. That, that, that was a state road with that. Was, right. And we graciously accepted it, I guess. We didn't have a choice. <laughs> so anyway, that's the summary there. And you do have, or at least you have the contract from WHPS that I presented at least in a, a small overview of what the costs were for pre-engineering of $31,800 to get this bridge going. And then estimated final design will be another 30,000. So we're looking at 62,000, but that's that's a rough number because I don't have that other contract and we won't know that until preliminary is done, so. Question between option one and option two. Why would we, why would we do a temporary repair and then still build a new bridge? Would it only be just to save traffic control costs or? Yeah. That's but when you look at the numbers, would we save, you know, we'd be doing traffic control and then we'd still be paying for the temporary repair, but it would be just to get the road back. Option two is, do we want full width traffic back on the system until we can replace the bridge? Or can we live with the, the one lane option with signals? Because the liability is there. I, I, I battle a lot with myself as to this is working. It works fine until something happens and then it's not a standard anymore. And then we maybe open up ourselves to some liability. But if we get traffic control in there and set it up the proper way, there's still less liability for us if something were to happen. The biggest, the biggest issue with that is the intersection that's within the standard setup for the traffic control. We might be looking at three traffic signals instead of just two because the people that come off of Cameo need to know which way traffic's headed and the staging there so and, and the way the, the lengths are set up it's just all design I mean, it's it's not a standard setup either you know i know semis coming from the north i don't want to go west yeah and have, you know the well, culture always coming and, and having fun. having this other setup might make it even worse because the way the traffic control is they, they spread everything spread out further well, that give more room, probably. Well, no, it'll be, it'll be the, the length of the traffic control setup on 105 is stretched out each of the bridge. They might have more restriction even at that intersection. By the way, the barrels and stuff are set up. Oh. But we'll have to, to work through that because right. maybe we can narrow it up a little bit just for the turning traffic because most of that turning traffic, when they turn to the go to the west, they're still going to have to be on that one lane, so it shouldn't be over. We're not going to allow them to be on the bridge where it's closed to make right. that turn. And I don't think any of them are doing it now. No, so no, it's not. It's a matter of whether that traffic control allows us to shorten up. And I think we can probably shorten up the closure a little bit to allow for that, but also for that turn where the signals end up when it's all said and done. Uh, the guy over there, they're having trouble with that. Yeah. Yeah. And so then, do we want to open it up to? Full with traffic and spend the extra money on a temporary repair, but there's design in that and getting the contractor in in a timely manner. We won't make anything better before spring or before spring planting, I guess. We're already kind of in spring, but 
tamper here if you're going to tear it out anyway. I don't, I don't think that's a well, it's I throwing, you're throwing a lot something. of money into something, then yeah, we can get all the steel back, but we don't need <clears throat> labor back. All right. So now the, the design for the new bridge, will the road be a little wider than what it currently is? 105? Yes. I think the, I'd have to look. Yes. So that We've got, I, I got to remember what the actual, I don't remember what the bridge deck width is now. But we will use the minute we'll probably use the minimum standards on it, which I think the minimum standard is still 32 foot. Still would be wider than what we have. Uh, we can still we can still discuss. Yeah, I mean there'll with those designs you're getting rid of a curb which takes up you know, yeah. a little bit of work on each side. But yeah, it, it should be wider when we'll and it, we'll look at this design standards a little bit. We have to make it a little wider, we make it a little wider because it is a difficult intersection to make work. I mean, I don't know how many times we replace guardrail. On that side of the curve because yeah. people drive over it. See people then rub it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's the inside the curve is either 26 or 28 feet, probably. Yeah. Just so we'll, we'll make sure it's a wider. Yeah. I don't know if that guardrail, you know, that, that, when it's in, if it can be moved back, I don't that it's, guardrail gets hammered it's, about every other year. Yeah, it's been repaired and uh, we've tried to make it work what we can, but yeah. it's obsolete, I guess, when you think about what's there now and what should be there. I've been so it'll be improved in that respect, but it's going to meet it's going to meet the, the requirements too. And I don't know. It seems silly in a way because when you see the design, it's much like the one on uh, Foothill South of St. Anne's Street where that came around right that corner. There, you've got an attenuator head on the gravel road, but nothing coming. But you're also on the on the tail end of the of the bridge. So, but those attenuators are there for a reason. But to make the guardrail continuous. You got to take around the corner, and then it adds more length. To, yeah, I've helped repair that twice over the years. It seems like the people that are coming from the southeast are not, I don't know if it's because of the slippery or what, but they smoke that corner. I've seen the trucks try to swing wide and their trailers end up riding on top of it sometimes if they're trying to cut it too tight too. They're not familiar with the inner area and they're trying to make it a right hand turn to go west and they don't use the whole intersection to get yeah. around. Yeah. And putting the, the the lane closure just makes that worse. Mm -hmm. Well, so you do have a professional services agreement um, to evaluate, or you know, so we want to make a decision on this bridge today. I guess I would recommend option one. After seeing everything, I guess I would probably agree with you on option one. Even if we go with option one and it's not working out, we can always do something different later. But to me, it's get it get the bridge started in design so we can get it let by December. So um, you uh, move to make that motion that we go with option one. I was made a motion to go with option one. We have a second. I'll second that. Mark will second that. Any further discussion on this? Can I ask that we're also improving the contract then? Yeah. I was going to okay. ask if you wanted to have this approved first. Well, either way, um, it's not on the agenda, but we can do it. Right? How about? Yeah. Well, bridge design is on the agenda. Bridge so design is on. I guess yeah. that was initially supposed to be the contract. Oh, was right. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, that was the intent anyway. Actual design. Put them together. And now, well, they've got the motion and a second. Yeah, I do it. And let's do that. Okay. Any further discussion on the option one bridge design? Roll call, Jim. Abstain. Steve. Aye. Mike. Aye. Mark. Aye. Todd. Aye. Okay. That's decided. Now we we'll, now we. I make a motion to approve the agreement, professional services agreement with WHKS. Okay, and the lump sum fee of 31.8. Is that correct, Rich? Correct, yep. Okay. He just made a motion. Do we have a second on that? I guess I will, I'll second that. 
Any further discussion on this? Roll call. Mark. Aye. Mike. Aye. Steve. Aye. Jim. Abstain. Todd. Aye. Okay. Do you have the original there, Mike, or an original you can sign? Uh, there we go. Here. Yeah, you can sign This one? Yeah, yeah, if you want to sign that. Okay. Thank okay. you. I don't have much else for you this morning. I appreciate approval on that so we can get it going. Yeah. I'm sorry I had to put you through all that, Rich, but I still wanted to have you explain all that. Oh, no, that's fine. fine. I should have yeah. maybe no, kind of explained a little bit better and give you the numbers, which yeah, no, is good information. That's, that's on me. Okay, like I said, we'll figure budget out when I get access to our system again and talk about the budget next week or two, hopefully. I know when I called the DOT, they they knew they were in trouble when I called the service bureau. They took a comment on what happened. So I'm guessing it's not very good. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing it's a pretty severe thing. Right, that's not good. Okay. There's that. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Okay. That's all I got. That's all I got. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, Amy's here. Were you here for Amy for that SF that um, Senate file or? Yeah, I can. Okay. Okay. Can we go back to that? Yeah, we can go back to that. Otherwise, I can wait. Whatever you, whatever. Okay. But I'll I, just so quick information for you. I, meant, I mentioned it just a little bit at the department head discussion. So yeah. and I am. Um, I think my uh, clock in my office quit working because it's a lot later than I thought it was. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to bring to your attention there's um, some clarification on an existing law. This is Senate File 2366 um, that has passed out of the House and is now going to the governor for final approval. This is in regards to wind energy conversion property. And um, we would we would call it a wind farm. And um, I just wanted to point out that, again, this is just clarification on an existing law, but I do think that this is all good things for Mitchell County. I say that because the clarification, as I understand it, is that only if the wind ordinance is repealed by the county supervisors, then the wind farm would become centrally assessed on its 20th year after the full um, schedule had expired. Again, that's only upon repeal of the wind ordinance. And what I gave to you is basically um, the original version of this bill, which at the time was House file 2561 later became Senate file 2366. But um, this fiscal note is basically explaining the intent of the bill. And I did put some uh, notes in there again in the red boxes of my interpretation. Um, the second part of the bill is that it also states um, that maintenance, refurbishing, and or repowering of the property shall not cause the project to receive the benefit of a new valuation schedule. The reason this is a good thing for Mitchell County is that previous guidance from the Iowa Department of Revenue was instructing assessors um, upon the refurbishment of the wind turbines that we would need to subtract the cost of the refurbishment from the original valuation schedule and then start the refurbishment cost at a um, start that schedule over, meaning the value would start at zero. But um, in order not to double assess, you would first have, have to subtract that cost from the original schedule. And that would not have been um, beneficial to Mitchell County, being that they are in an urban renewal area. Um, but that has happened in other counties. Um, where they where they have done that. So with with this um, again, waiting for that final approval from from the governor, which um, of course I don't see any problem uh, with that going forward because there's really no um, fiscal impact 
to this bill. It's it's simply clarification on the existing law. Um, does is that understandable for everyone? Okay. Yes, I think all so. right. Mm -hmm. That's all I have for you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank, thank, you. thank you. Okay, well, moving on here, we got amend motion to the health insurance deductions. Okay, when we uh when we made the motion for our health insurance as employees last time, I'm just gonna read this because I don't yeah. want to uh detract from anything, so I want to make sure it cover everything. So when discussing insurance at the February 8th board meeting, it has come to our attention that some of the discussion and motion made was not as good as what we could have done. At that meeting, board comments and questions pertain to Mitchell County insurance policy members of the 11E and 12C plans, and that members of those plans contribute $5 single and $7 family from their paychecks. My original plan to tie the 11E and 12C plans together can and should be simplified as was originally proposed. Uh, I'm, I am prepared to make an amended motion to the original motion made on February 8, 2022, regarding fiscal year 22-23 employee health care paycheck deductions. The old motion, as read from February 8, 2022, meeting minutes was motion by Smolik, second by Weary to have employees on the 11e plan contribute five dollars for the individual plan per pay period seven dollars for the family plan per pay period and have the hsa monthly contributions be based on the 11e actual cost roll call all voted aye so i'm going to make an i'm going to make a motion if you're going to second it that's fine we can discuss it but i'm going to make a motion we can move from there so the amended motion to the February 8th, 2022 motion is, I move all Mitchell County employees that utilize the Mitchell County health care plan have a deduction applied to their paychecks to offset insurance costs. This deduction shall apply to the current 11E and 12C plans. Single policy members shall have a $5 deduction applied to 24 paychecks per year. Family policy members shall have a $7 deduction applied to 24 paychecks per year. Deductions shall be shown as a separate line amount on each paycheck. This employee deduction under the 11E plan will be applied to the current partial self-funding system already being used. This employee deduction under the 12C plan will be applied to defray, to defray HSA insurance costs. That's the motion. And I'll second that. Okay. We got a first and we got a second. Any further discussion on this? Roll call. Todd? Aye. Jim? Aye. Steve? Aye. Mike? Aye. Mark? Aye. Okay. I should clear that up. Okay. We got discussion on discussion and action on group benefits program 28E agreement resolution. We'll give it a little brief. So group benefit partners, they're the ones, they're that third party where um well the traditional plan. They pay, they send the checks to employees and we pay them back for those costs. So we're basically working under all these rules, but they want to put it in an agreement, have it all written down, all signed by all the counties. So it's something they're already doing without us signing the agreement. They just want an agreement signed. Yeah. Makes sense, I guess. Mm -hmm. You want me to read this or no? If you want to read maybe the resolution, unless you want to read that whole agreement, that's the other one. Uh, just see the resolution. Just part of it, yeah. Whereas the Iowa State Association of Counties ISAC Group Benefits Program, a Chapter 2080 organization, has adopted a 2080 agreement for its group health and related benefits program for the purpose of providing group health benefits for employees of participating 
dependencies. Whereas the County of Mitchell desires to adopt the 28 e agreement for health and related benefits for eligible employees. Now, therefore, it be resolved by Mitchell County Board of Supervisors that the county desires to adopt the 28 e agreement for the ISAC group benefits program. So, I guess we need a motion and a second on this to continue with what we've been doing. Just, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve this. Second. Jim has seconded. Any further discussion on this? First of all, Steve. Aye. Todd. Aye. Mark. Aye. Jim. Aye. Mike. Aye. Moving on. We've got to approve a letter of support for potential funding of proposed OMB broadband project. Um, last week's meeting, I mentioned uh, some possible funding from Ashley Hinson that she wants to put some money into her district, possibly if she gets some money from the feds. And uh, one of the potential projects we want something all of you wants to do for Orchard. It's not Mitchell County money. It's uh, something that would be coming from Ashley Hinson if it happens. So here's a letter of support that we would. Uh, possibly approved to OMU. Congresswoman Henson, the purpose of this letter is to communicate the Board of Supervisors support for application being submitted by Osage Municipal Utilities to develop new broadband service to the City of Orchard and other residents in close proximity to that town. The Board of Supervisors focus on economic development and see that companies in our region struggle with a limited supply of workers. Broadband connectivity is a barrier to job growth in our county and must be addressed. A number of employees continually experience difficulty, employers, excuse me, a number of employers continually experience difficulty in new hire, in hiring new employees. <clears throat> this problem ranges from small to large businesses. R.R. Donnelly, Grain Millers, Wool, Rim and Wheel, A to Z Drying, Fall Construction, Milk House Candles, Valent Biosciences and Fox River Mills are some of our larger businesses that have called out the problem that broadband connectivity for their existing employees is very limited, not only in rural areas, but also small towns within Mitchell County. This is not only a problem for existing residents, but for all Mitchell County businesses when attempting to attract new residents to work and live in our county. All school districts in Mitchell County have mentioned the need for adequate broadband. Today's learning environment requires this to properly educate students in rural areas and small towns. Families are hesitant to move to a rural area without proper broadband service. OMU has been the main internet service provider to Osage for a number of years. OMU has had a commitment to expand this service to encompass as much of the Osage Community School District as practical. The small towns of Mitchell and Orchard are within this school district Broadband construction to Mitchell has been completed, and it is OMU's goal for the town of Orchard to be concluded to the OMU service provider network. Providing broadband in Orchard and Mitchell County is important to the Mitchell County Board of Supervisors. We are committed to promoting this project. We encourage funding of this application due to the high level of need for broadband in Mitchell County. This broadband project will not only support our current workforce, but aid our commercial industrial businesses with any future expansions. Adequate broadband is also vital to the education of our youth in today's society. This is a direct positive impact to the economic development of Mitchell County. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely, the Mitchell County Board of Supervisors. Okay. Thank you, Jim. So, we're for a motion and a second to. I will move on that letter of recommendation. I'll second that. Okay, Jim has made a motion. Steve has seconded it. Any further discussion on this? Roll call. Todd? Aye. Mike? Aye. Jim? Aye. Mark? Aye. Steve? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on, we've got to approve the auditor's quarterly report. I added one to the agenda. we got one, one more. Oh. So approved letter of support for potential. Oh, sorry. Approved letter of support for WWTF improvements for Rice Hill. 
Oh. Anyways, okay. That is yeah. basically the same situation where that there is some funding that uh, you can get through Ashley Henson, the Eastville City. Uh, there's a need for a different sewage uh, treatment lagoon out there, and they express that they would like to have a letter of support from the supervisors. So I will read what that request is. Uh, and a, we, the supervisor, we, the Mitchell County Board of Supervisors, wish to express our support of the Riceville, uh, Iowa wastewater treatment facility improvement project as a small community with a plant constructed in the early 1960s. It's time for a new plant that meets the needs of the community and projects protects the environment. The existing plant has served the community well, but meeting with the new NPDES requirements requires an upgrade while allowing for growth in the community and reduction in ammonium nitrate, nitrogen effluent into the Wapsi Finnegan River. And in closing, thank you for all that you do for the citizens of your district and, and of Iowa by your service. Sincerely, Mitchell County Board of Supervisors. So, okay. so we had a motion and a second to approve that? Yes, and I will move to. Okay. Steve made a motion to approve this letter. We have a second. Oh, Mark will second that. Any further discussion on this? Roll call. Mark. Aye. Mike. Aye. Steve. Aye. Jim. Aye. Todd. Aye. And thank you, <laughs> citizens of Riceville. Appreciate this. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Now, we have item 10 approve the auditor's quarterly report. We have that in front of us. It's a total amount paid to the county treasurer was $11,054.79, quarter ending March 31st, 2022. I'll make that motion. Okay. I would make a motion to approve the report. No second. Second. Give me a second. It. Any further discussion on this? Roll call. Jim. Aye. Steve. Aye. Mike. Aye. Mark. Aye. Todd. Aye. Okay. Moving on. Item 11. Items of note. <clears throat> Meetings attended. I have nothing. Nothing. I had a public health meeting, and it was quite a lengthy meeting. They, they went over a lot, but their expenses and revenue is in good shape for this time of year on track. Oh, there's an environmental expo that the Amanda's going to attend on the 17th and 18th of June at the Nature Center. And have her information there. I guess the census for public health is down a little bit, but we're at 83 clients. Anyway, I'm waiting on their door key, Bob, to get done. So they'd like that done. So we're going to look and see where that was at. Mike, when was the environmental expo for the dates of June, June 17th and 18th? That's for the public? For the public, yes. It's at the Nature Center. Yeah. It's quite interesting. I mean, there's a number that have been going there years ago with my kids. Maybe there's things for kids. Yeah. A lot of good information there. Learning. So, anyway. I just had a Shell Rock watershed uh, meeting. They're waiting to get the grant money. Up. They're, gonna, they're in running for that, get that big grant money, and then they can start projects going. They had a few uh, people. Uh, Organizations donate to them already. Wait for some cash. Mm -hmm. But I had nothing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, moving on. The newer management. 
Point of updates. Um, Friesen Farms East, 2699 390th Street, Osage. Friesen Farms North, 2059 420th Street, Osage. Friesen Farms Liberty, 34th Site, 2552 410th Street, Osage. And Friesen Farms Northeast, 2281 410th Street, Osage. Thank you. Uh, moving on, item C, public comments. Anybody in the public have any comments? Hearing none, I guess I'll move a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. I'll so move. Steve is moved. Do we have second? Second. We have second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Okay. Rachel, can I just?